For new members of Parliament, an important first task is a presentation of an inaugural speech to Parliament. Inaugural speeches are usually made as part of the address in reply debate, which responds to the speech delivered by the Governor at the opening of a new Parliament. I desire to move that the following address in reply to the speech of the Governor to both Houses of Parliament be agreed to by this House. Opening day of the 58th Parliament saw a number of new members given the opportunity to make their inaugural speeches, with many outlining the issues they are passionate about. Today is an opportunity for members to reflect on their pathway to this place, to consider how they want to contribute to this Parliament and help to shape the policies that will further advance Victoria into the future. If we are to offer the people of Victoria the education, health care, environmental protection and infrastructure they need, we will need to both improve the taxation mix and challenge the role of government in service provision. We need to think differently about regulation. There is no doubt that ICE is devastating Victorian families and communities, but the impact on regional and rural Victoria has been particularly destructive. Victorian Police Deputy Commiss Commissioner Graham Ashton has highlighted the ice plague affecting country communities, saying it is clear that an entire generation of rural youth is at risk, threatening the future prosperity of those communities. But one of the biggest issues facing society today is in fact not capitalism, it's not socialism, it's social inclusion. The role of government is to be inclusive and to support those who are least able to look out for themselves. We need to provide them a voice to those who struggle to speak. It's not about smaller government, it's not about bigger government, it's about smarter government. Today there are still many issues of gender that are unfinished business. Here are just a few. The gender pay gap and discrimination in employment. Domestic violence and other forms of assault on women. It is nothing short of shameful that almost every week an Australian woman dies at the hands of a partner or former partner. Agricultural producers and researchers from around the world are visiting Western Victoria to see how we do business. Ongoing support and a welcoming policy environment is needed to ensure public and private investment in local agricultural innovation, research and development. Like many of you, I've been appalled uh, by the number of people who die every year waiting for an organ transplant that never comes. I'm proud to say that I've signed up to be an organ donor. However, the real issue is that too few people have made this choice and the problem with the current scheme is that it's an opt-out scheme. Many members reflected on their personal histories that led them into politics. I was fortunate to have many inspirational teachers, two of whom were my English teacher, Mrs Mary Purcell, and my legal studies teacher, Mr Jeff Brodie. Mrs Purcell brought to life the works of Oscar Wilde and Albert Camus to a classroom of 17-year-old boys. No mean feat. And Mr Brodie awoke in me the love of our political system, its practices and functions, and its egalitarian nature. My father, Ray, raised our family of eight children, leaving home at 4am every day to head to the news agency in Pakenham, who would return home at 6.30pm. Whilst it was difficult not having both parents at home, it presented some wonderful opportunities for my six brothers and one sister to develop our independence. There was also plenty of thanks for those whose efforts had helped to secure the prized seat in Parliament. As every member here can attest, while we stand here as individuals, nothing would be possible without the support of our family, friends and volunteers. Some members reflected on the fact that 158 years after the first Victorian Parliament opened, there are still pioneers in politics. I'm enormously proud to be the first woman to represent Dandenong. And being the first allows you to lay claim to all manner of things. So on that basis, I can lay claim to being the smartest, the tallest, the funniest and the best looking woman to ever represent Danny Nong. Until the next one anyway. And on that score, I sincerely hope there is no shortage of women seeking to follow this path after I'm gone. And after hearing the first of many inaugural speeches, there was hope among those who had been there before that parliamentarians from all sides of politics could work together in the interests of the people they represent. Before the great hurly-burly um, of the politics and the debate of the Victorian Parliament truly take off next year, I do think it is worth occasionally pausing to reflect what we have in common. Um, and I have been given pause to reflect this evening by virtue of the fact that some of those who sit um, on the other side of the House 
Um, there are certain issues that they spoke about where uh, their contribution broadly reflected um, my views on those issues.